So welcome back. We have started looking at the RetiNet and the Reto algorithm and we said that the RetiNet is basically a much more efficient way of doing what Match did. Match was brute force. In every cycle, it looked at all the patterns in all the rules and all the working memory elements and kept checking whether each of them matches the other or not. The RetiNet, as we will see, will look at every working memory element exactly once and in that process, it will try, it, it will identify which rules it matches. Furthermore, in the next cycle, it will remember all the matches that it has done in the last cycle, which of course is the key to savings. So, the first thing is to organize data essentially, instead of having a sequential list of working memory elements, we want to organize them in such a way that the rules find it easier to match. So, whenever we have large amounts of data, uh, we often tend to use some kind of a divide and conquer, conquer strategy, uh, so that you divide the data and then when you want to look for a particular data in all of that, you traverse this kind of trees which are called discrimination trees. So, you do test 0 at one level, then depending on what the data matches, you send it down one path and then do another test and then do another test and so on. So, it traverses down the this thing and uh, since the depth of the tree is typically smaller than the length of the uh, data elements, this is going to be much more efficient and we have studied this in various places. So, binary search trees is a starting place you must have done followed by B trees or decision trees if you have looked at that, KD trees, quad trees and tries essentially. Mm -hmm. Tries are used with alphabets essentially. The top half of the written net is going to be a discrimination tree. It is going to be made up of what are going to be called as alpha nodes. So, you are going to look at a working memory element which you are going to put into the network and it will traverse down certain path based on the different tests that it satisfies. And it will be stored in nodes which are called as alpha nodes. These are part of the discrimination structure. So, alpha nodes serve as a working memory of the rule based system. A working memory token is inserted at the root of this network that we are going to look at. So, if it is if the action was make a working memory element, then we would add a positive token. If the action was delete, then it would be a negative token. So, instead of make, sometimes we use add also. Then it traverses down the network. So, you, you put in a working memory element, it does some test and based on the value of the test, it goes down one of the paths essentially. When we draw these networks, we will use a more compact representation. Uh, which uh, we will see in a moment, I think. So, the first test usually looks at the class name as to what is the kind of data you are looking at. Is it a student data, is it a ranking data or whatever the thing is and it separates the token and subsequent test will look at the value of some attribute. The key to building an efficient data network would be to organize the test, the order of the attributes in such a way that the more common attributes are tested first and the less common attributes are tested down that particular branch that they occur in essentially. So, instead of drawing this complex, uh, this uh, diagram, we would use a uh, more compact representation. So, either we can represent where the test is stated at the top node on the on the higher node and the branches are labeled by the test value or we would represent it in a case where the test is represented in the destination node essentially. So, if you have a working memory element, if it satisfies test 1 value 1, then it should come down this path. Whereas, there we are saying the test 1 is on the higher node 
and the value 1 will go down this path. Both are saying the same thing, it is just that our diagrams would express that in different way essentially. So, if the working memory passes the test, then it moves on to the appropriate alpha node down the branch, otherwise it will get stuck on that node essentially, which means it is, it may not have been, the working memory may not have in, enough information that we are looking for. The other kind of nodes are called beta nodes. So, beta nodes essentially capture the fact that let us say these two working memory elements here. If one goes down the left path and if another goes down the right path, these are two different working memory elements, but they will match the same rule. So, one will match pattern 1, one will match pattern 2, then they will come together here that if they are doing that. So, typically there is a join based on the value of the variable and then you would have a compound token that would traverse here and maybe it matches the third element. So, this node represents a rule with three patterns and this rule would be satisfied if they, the three working memory elements were inserted into the network and they eventually got together at this place where we know that these three patterns are being matched. So, beta nodes have at least one parent, more often more. Two or more parents must satisfy some join condition. That is when we say that the pattern is from one given rule and a rule instance can be attached to any beta node essentially. So, beta nodes will basically be defining the rules that we are getting. Here is the instance of a join with three tokens. So, here is another example uh, of a data network. Uh, we have four rules here, rule 1, rule 2, rule 3 and rule 4. So, rule 3 for example needs two patterns and they must come from this direction as shown here essentially. Rule 2 also needs these two patterns which will come here. So, if these two patterns are present, then if these two patterns match, which means there are two working memory elements which match those two patterns, then rule 2 will match. But rule 1 needs whatever rule 2 needs plus it needs two tokens to come from here as well. So, rule 2 has two patterns, rule 1 has four patterns. So, you can see that rule 2 is a default version of rule 1. It is only looking at part of the data that rule 1 is looking. So, if only those two patterns were there in the knowledge base or the working memory, then rule 2 would fire. If all the four patterns were present, rule 1 would also go into the conflict set, rule 2 would also go into the conflict set and then if you are using specificity, then rule 1 would be selected. So, those are the two patterns that we just saw. So, here is a small OPS5 like program which is used to define shapes. So, for example, you might define a green pyramid as follows. You are saying that if x is a block, it has name x and the base of the block is a square and its area of the base is greater than 1. The side of the block is inclined, it is not vertical, its surface is plain and the color of the surface is green. And the top of the block is a point. 
So, what are we looking at? We have said that the base is a square and the sides. So, there is some, something hidden there that we have not drawn that the sides are inclined and they meet at a point in the top and the color of the surface is green essentially. And that is what we call as a green pyramid even though I have drawn it in red. Uh, Let us assume that it is green. Likewise, uh, okay, so there uh, we have said that then add a working memory saying that x is a green pyramid essentially. So, that is what we have done here make class block type this thing. Likewise, you can define a cylinder as you can imagine that if it is a block whose base is a circle with area greater than 1 let us say whose sides are vertical curved surfaces and whose top is flat then it is a cylinder. Likewise, you can define two more kind of uh, shapes one is a wand. What is a wand? Uh, there is a base which is circular and it is small. So, whose area is just one essentially and uh, whose surface is like curved and it has a pointed top essentially. So, it is like a stick with a circular cross section, but gradually tapering to a point that would be a wand. And the third thing is a dome essentially. So, base is circular and it is like a spherical structure essentially. So, we have defined these three three these these four kind of shapes. And now, let us look at uh, how they would be represented in the Rate network. The Rate network is a compilation of the rules. So, the Rate network for this particular problem would basically capture these four rules and that is why we said that it has the rules inside essentially. It is only when the data comes that we want to see whether it is a uh, pyramid or whether it is a dome as the case may be. Hmm? We will do that in the next uh, video I think.